In this video lesson, we are going to look at how to enter text and symbols into a Word document. The first thing that you have to do when you start typing is look at where the insertion point is. The insertion point is the flashing line on the screen. You should just be able to see it there flashing away. Okay, that's called the insertion point or the cursor insertion point and wherever that line is flashing is where the very next thing that you type will be. So if I was to start typing now to, to make a space between words we press the space bar and you'll have noticed that as soon as I did that the computer recognized that the word was finished and we were at the beginning of a sentence so it's created a capital letter for me at the beginning of the sentence. Now I'm not going to talk to you about how to use a keyboard particularly you should already know that so I'll, I'll mention one or two things but certainly not any everything space bar between words once only when you finish the word one space and then continue your typing notice the insertion point moves along with me I can use the cursor keys to move that insertion point but only within the text that already exists. So if you can't move the, the cursor, it probably just means it's at the end of the document or the beginning of the document and won't go any further. So I can move that line and just to preview, this is how it works. Wherever that line is, the very next thing I type will appear there. And you can see that's appeared in the middle of the line. So before you start typing, you always look where is that insertion point? So when you continue typing one word between each line. And I'll just type a few words in here. When you want capital letters, hold down the shift key. Again, some people use the caps lock key. I suggest not unless you know you're going to be typing lots of capitals in a row because you can forget to switch it off. For me, just use the shift key for those letters that you want in uppercase or capitals. You've got commas, full stops. The general rule is you can either use one space after punctuation or two. It is up to you, but be consistent throughout your document. I tend to just use one. Okay, we'll come back to for spelling mistakes um, in a later video, but you can see I've got a spelling mistake there. Don't worry about that. Did you notice what happened there as I continued typing? I'll just take that back and watch it again. See, it's jumped down to the next line. You don't need to do that yourself. The computer will do that for you. It's called text wrapping. And the computer works out whether or not it can fit that word on the previous line. If it can, it does. If it can't, it wraps it round to the beginning of the next line. So don't press the enter or return key at the end of the doc at the end of the line. Let the computer do that for you. And so on and so forth. So you just carry on your typing. When you want to start a new paragraph. You press the enter key or the return key on your keyboard once. That's it. Again, you'll get a lot of people showing you to press the enter key twice because that gives you a space between your paragraphs. You don't. You press the enter key once. That is a paragraph. As far as Microsoft is concerned, that is a paragraph. I've started a new paragraph there. If you want a space between your paragraphs, there is another way of doing it that we'll come back to in later lessons. So if you're really desperate to be creating a document now and you haven't got to those advanced lessons, then yes, press the enter key more than once. But you really shouldn't. It's bad practice. You'll obviously want to practice some typing. Um, it takes a bit of time to build up any kind of speed with typing, so don't worry if it takes you some time. That's normal typing. Remember, you're looking for that insertion point. 
What you can also do is insert symbols into your document. Now, I don't mean the ones on your keyboard. For example, on your keyboard, you can get the pound sign by clicking Shift 3. Or you can get the uh, star sign by clicking by pressing Shift 8. So there are symbols you can use on your keyboard, but there's also symbols inbuilt into Microsoft Word. And we can get to those from Insert. Always think of the keyword. You want to insert a symbol. So go to the Insert menu. Most things are quite logical. Once we've clicked on Insert, we can drop down to Symbol. And there you can see a whole host of symbols that you can use in your document. So, for example, if you would like this arrowhead, we click on it once with a left mouse button and then drop down to the Insert button. Click that once. Now, I would expect this window to disappear at this time so you can see what's underneath it, but it doesn't. Once you've inserted your symbol, you then need to close the dialog box and then you can see your symbol underneath. So that was insert symbol. Choose the symbol you want to use. Try a tick this time and then insert. Close the dialog box and there's your symbol. Also on that menu, that's insert symbol. It's choosing those symbols from the Windings font. You can choose symbols from any font that's installed on your system. People tend to use Windings because there's some really useful ones in there. But it's up to you. You can have a look around and see what's available. There's recently used ones at the bottom. So if you use ones over and over again, they appear in this list. Use them in just the same way and insert and that inserts into your document. Also on insert symbol we have special characters. These are things like copyright signs, registered trademark signs. I use these in exactly the same way. Select the one you want, in this case the copyright, and click on insert. Close the dialog box and there's your copyright symbol. Although we haven't yet covered formatting, it's useful to note that these symbols are exactly the same as a letter. So whatever kind of formatting you want to apply to your normal letters, and we'll come back to this remember, make that red, you can also do that to your symbols. Okay, so symbols are just characters in the same way as your letters and numbers are. So that's entering text into your document and entering symbols. And just as a little added extra, we can use something called click and type. Normally, well always, your typing appears where that cursor insertion point is. But if I just come underneath my picture a little bit and show you, scroll that down. If you have a look at my uh, mouse cursor, you can see as I come across the page, it changes. We've got a, an arrowhead. We've got what's called an eye beam with a little icon to the right of the eye beam that's the left aligned icon. If I move it across, you'll see that eventually changes to an eye beam with a center aligned icon and eventually an eye beam with a right aligned icon. What we can do is something called click and type, which is if I know I want to start some text underneath my picture and I want it to be centered underneath my picture, I can move my cursor till I get my centered eye beam icon and then double click. The insertion point jumps to that position and then I can start writing my text. And that text is gone there where the insertion point is and it's also center aligned. We'll come back to alignment and things at a later date but that's click and type. Often useful because once you've inserted a picture or all kinds of other objects you sometimes can get stuck in being able to type below it. So you can use that double click technique to put the cursor insertion point where you want it to go.